Welcome back everyone. Today is Wednesday, so we're halfway through the week. I hope your week has been good to you so far. Hopefully you can you recognize this piece. The last time you saw her, there wasn't nearly as much inking done. This is part one of three of my new series titled America Inked. All of this has been done left-handed. This particular piece is titled Justice. So I've spent most of today getting in, blocking in the heavier shadows. This is the last time you saw her. It was just the line art that had been inked. So uh, for today's video, I'm going to just be working on that a little bit more and uh, see how far we get on video, right? I have used a couple of different pens. So if you know, if you're wondering why there's a difference, this black here is actually from the Master's Touch. My dog's just shaking the table, sorry. This is from the Master's Touch uh, brush tip marker. And it's a lighter black, which I didn't, I didn't notice how much lighter until I put the two, these two pens together. But I like that it's lighter because it, it doesn't get muddied up, I think, with the ink from the Faber-Castell. And I'm using a calligraphy pen because the last time I bought a Faber-Castell pen on its own, I needed a brush tip and they didn't have any. And this was the whitest tip I could find. So, And then for the shading on her hair, I used this one. My 0.7 millimeter Molotow black liner inking pen. So it does go to show you that the brand you use does make a difference as far as how their inks are going to look. And it's something that you should keep in mind just so you're not, you know, caught off guard by it. And when you're inking, oh, see, that line got away from me. Oh no. You um, also keep in mind that line variation in width and things, even though those two are now the same width, um, makes a difference. If it's all the same size, then it's, it's just, it's, you're not really going to have any depth to it. I think I'm going off screen on this line, yeah. This paper is uh, Strathmore comic paper, and it's the traditional size and medium, so it's an 11 by 17. Now that's for like, Western comics. Um, the manga paper, they do have paper, spe especially for manga, and that paper, of course, is smaller. If you've ever seen a manga, you, you would know that just by, that would make sense, right? So, having a little bit of trouble getting back here. Okay. Now, I'm trying, just for myself, to not get too detailed with this wooden floor background, just because I'm afraid of taking away from her and also if she gets lost in the I don't want her to get lost in the shadows in the background so I'm trying to keep it kind of simple but also I don't want it to look like it's undone and um, perspective and lighting are also things that I'm still practicing. You know, I've been drawing for a really long time, but those are areas that I can always, that I definitely need more practice in. But, you know, everyone has areas that they could and should improve on, get more practice in. So I'll get there. Those bits were worked off camera because I'm cut off here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
trying to decide if I just want to color all that in. So I'm gonna I don't really have any reference for the floor, so there we go. I'm winging it. <laughs> I'm not going to color her in, or any, uh, and I won't be coloring in either of the other two pieces in this series. It's just going to be black and white, except for the little bit of orange that you see, which was from my Tri Blend Spectrum Noir orange blend pen or marker, and that's it. For the sword, I tried to, um, well, I, I searched, put an image search for Grecian swords. I want it to be in that style. Can't remember Justice's name at the, the name of Justice, her actual name at the moment. Uh, but I do remember it was Grecian, Greek, so that's why I chose that sort of sword. Wish I could remember her name, that would be interesting. Or you might find that interesting, I think it is interesting. Also, something else um, I want to try, I've been thinking of, so next time I go to the art store, I'm going to get them. They have, uh, for watercolor, these pens, they're like, they're clear, but they have maybe a bluish tint to the handle, and the tip of it is a brush, and you can take the, the tip off and put, you're supposed to put water in it, um, for water, to paint with watercolor, so you don't have to have uh, a cup of water out for the paints, but I think I'm going to try those with ink and put ink in the handle, try to make my own brush tip markers because projects like these, they take a lot of ink <laughs> and replacing those brush tip markers can get, I think, it gets to be more expensive than if I were to buy the ink and use them in that with, with that uh, brush. There's probably a specific name for it because of the kind of brush it is, but I'll see how that goes. Of course, I'll make a video out of that so you'll be able to see as well. hand might be in your way for a minute. Without getting 
into into it too much. I did mention that this drawing is part of a new series called America Inked. I think one of the things about art is it helps you process things, you know, instead of keeping it in. It definitely has given me an outlet for so many things um, that I just need to get out of my head throughout my life, you know, and I'm, I'm very grateful to have it. I think it's an important thing to have, to have some way to express yourself, whether it's visual arts or music, acting or anything, writing, just, it's important. And that's what's going on with this. There had to be a way to just kind of get out of my head for a little bit. And I thought, I came up with this idea. Here we are. <laughs> Now, if this were going to be published as a comic book, the last time I shared it with you, I think I spent a minute talking about the the margins, but over here, you can barely see it in the, let's turn this a little bit. This part would actually be cut off. This, this uh, dotted line right here, it's very pale because it's in photo blue, so you might not be able to see it all that great can see it up there yeah that's the trim line it's the trim margin so you're gonna lose anything if it's published as a comic it's over that part so if I were to move this paper over you won't even see that yeah but it's good to draw all to draw it and ink it all the way to the edge I think because that way you don't have this weird gap or space because you tried to keep it yeah, contained. It just it would go all the way to the printed to the end of the printed page. It is wood, but I'm kind of leery of putting the wood grain in any more of it. I tried to do it on the the pillar that she's tied to here, and I think it's almost too much, so I don't know about doing anything on the, the floor, unless I take a really fine tip, um, maybe like the point one. I haven't decided yet, so I may step away from it and then come back to it in regards to that. But I'm really happy with the way this one's turning out. It's sometimes there are pieces that I do when I just step back and go, wow, <laughs> I did that. <laughs> and this is one of them. See, I know that the scale should probably have some shadows under it, but I'm getting a little nervous, so I'm probably going to have to look at it without the phone in front of me <laughs> for the, the way I have it set up for the camera, so I think I'm going to call it for the video. Um, just something different. I want to share something with you. Um, I was at a thrift store the other day, well, yesterday, and I got a couple new books for like 10 cents each for the paperbacks. So one of them was Carl Sandburg, and 
I've heard a poem from him that I hadn't heard before in, in the book Chicago Poems. And the poem is titled Gypsy, but it was the last four lines that just really got me. I, I love them, so I'm going to read them to you real quick. It's called, it says, Snatch off the gag from thy mouth, child, and be free to keep silence. Tell no man anything, for no man listens, yet hold thy lips ready to speak. And I encourage you to look up the rest of the poem. But give you something to think about there. Uh, I hope that you are having a great week, as I said. Um, thank you so much for spending, choosing to spend your time on my videos and, and listening to me and checking in to see what I'm up to. I really do appreciate it. It, it does mean a lot to me. Uh, any questions, critiques, uh, advice, anything you want to say in the comments, feel free to leave me a comment. If you haven't already subscribed to my video, I mean my channel, <laughs> please go ahead, please, please subscribe. And uh, if, if you like to, you know anyone that you think would enjoy these videos, please feel free to share them on your social medias. And I will see you back here tomorrow. Take care and be safe. Bye-bye.